Hey, it's Sunday. Uh, this is kind of a supplemental brewcast. We're going to do something kind of quick. Hey, Paul's watching. Hey, how are you, man? Good to have you with us. Um, today is International Whiskey Day. And last year I did this out on the back porch because it was warm enough to do that. Today, the exact opposite of that. Michael's with us. Hey, howdy. <laughs> Uh, Michael, uh, Paul was first. <laughs> According to what I got here, Paul was first, but that's okay. It's not like it's a race. Uh, but you were the two. You and Paul both said that I needed to do this today, so we're doing this today. And I hope that you are about to have as much fun as I'm about to have, because we are going to go to a place that doesn't exist anymore. Okay? All right. So, anyway, last year we did this, and it was warm enough. I was sitting in a t-shirt. It was out on the back deck. And uh, it was great. Uh, we did um, the Balvenie Double Wood, and it was really good. I do like scotch. We're not going there today. Nope, today we're going someplace else. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, today we're going someplace else. That's right. We're going to the Great White North, and it's, uh, we're going to basically be talking about this guy in a way. Uh, you know about Crown Royal, you know about these uh, wonderful bags that they come in. Uh, Crown Royal uh, has got a really kind of a neat story. Uh, they got started back in 1939. Uh, Cana uh, Canada. <laughs> Canada was preparing to welcome King George VI and his wife, Queen Elizabeth. So they made this to honor that journey of, of the royals. Uh, let's see... It was only a Canadian product until 1964. That's when it came to the States, 1964. Um, let's see. Let's go through the brands. I don't have them all, but here's the original Crown Royal, the one that was made for the Royals. Uh, and then let's see. <laughs> There's Crown Royal Black. This one was first introduced in uh, 2010. Um, then there's this one which is the Crown Royal Reserve. This was introduced in 1992. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see, Crown Royal XO. I think I have that around here somewhere, but I don't know where. Uh, it's a blend of 50 whiskeys that is then finished in cognac casks from the French Limousine Forest. Um... I know, Michael, it's not Thursday. We're doing a special one for International Whiskey Day, and we're, we're going up to the Great White North to talk about Crown Royal, and the thing that we're going to taste is going to blow you away. Uh, let's see. Um, the Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye. Mm. Yep, that's this one. That one... Uh, May 2015 is when that got start. The Royal Hand Selected Barrel was introduced in May 2015 as well. It's a single barrel rye that is produced from the brand's coffee rye still. The only one of its kind, by the way, in North America. Uh, Crown, Crown Royal Monarch 75 Anniversary Blend created in 2014 to commemorate the 1939 Royal visit that inspired the brand and was prepared for a gift for the Royal family. The Royal Regal Apple, I don't have that with me. It is upstairs. I can't stand it. <laughs> I do not like it. I also do not have the Crown Royal Vanilla. I do have the Crown Royal Salted Caramel. The Crown Royal Texas Mesquite. That box is not the right size. <laughs> put that over here. Yeah, like that. And put that one there. Uh, let's see. The Crown Royal Peach. Uh, that was introduced in 2019. The Blender's Mash, which originally called the Bourbon Mash in 2018, but due to the TTB, the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, who regulates the naming of whiskeys, Crown Royal was given a year to rename the product, and now they call it Blender's Mash. I got that around here somewhere. I couldn't find it. Um, then there's also this one, the Hand Selected Barrel. That's a rare release. And then when you really get into it, you can also take a look at their um, Noble Collection. This one is a French oak cask finished whiskey. And then this one is the 16 year rye. 
I may have more in that collection, but that's what I have. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, that's just a, a mere sampling of what we have with Crown Royal. Um, but it goes without, I mean, you can't go without saying, these are the ones that are still in circulation. These are the ones that you can still find, okay? Um, the Bourbon Mash, again, has been renamed, so that one's going to look a little bit different. But there are some that have been retired. Get these down here. There we go. All right. Uh, so among those that have been retired are the Crown Royal Cask 16, which was introduced in 2007. It was made from over 50 and individually aged whiskeys in 12-year-old cognac barrels. Um, then there's the uh, Royal Honey which is this one. You will not find this one. No, I'm not going to try it all this evening, Michael. Uh -uh. <laughs> the winter wheat is awesome. Yes, uh, you're right. It is. It's fantastic. Um, and then this one is also one you will not find anymore, the maple. Um, they call this the Royal Maple Finished. These are not in circulation. They've been retired. They are discontinued. They, they're, not, they're nowhere. Another one has been discontinued, and you'll never find it ever. Uh, I mean, and if you do, it's going to be like, in the thousands of dollars, and that would be the Crown Royal XR. Now, the first Crown Royal XR was introduced in 2006. Uh, the, um, um, what was it called? The limited release version was, uh, it comes from their Waterloo, Ontario distillery. They closed that distillery in 1992, and then it burned to the ground in, in, um, in, um, 1993. So they were able to rescue a few of the barrels from the Waterloo distillery. And then they took that and they blended that with other Crown Royal um, offerings. And they came out with what was called the XR. It was, it was given in a red box, probably to uh, memorialize the fire that took that Waterloo facility down. Um, it was very, very hard to find and very quickly got expensive. Um, at last check, and this has been 2012, there were only two, 200 bottles left in circulation. Now they're all gone. Um, so, but that was not the end of... Hey, Ken. How are you, sir? Uh, that was not the end of the XR story. Because in... I want to make sure I have my dates right. The LaSalle Distillery used to be the Greenbrier Distillery before it was uh, purchased in Kentucky. This is the coolest thing. This was during Prohibition, okay? Uh, this Crown Royal bought that Kentucky distillery, dismantled it, and moved it to Canada in 1924 during the Prohibition, and it became known for producing products that were richer, as it were, which is attributed to the fine waters surrounding the island of Montreal, Quebec, which is where it was located. Uh, in 2003, the company closed LaSalle. And it's kind of creepy. There's been a couple of tours that have gone there, and this is what LaSalle looks like today. Um, from what I gather, they still do store some barrels there from Gimli, which is where they do most of their distilling now in Manitoba and Valleyfield, which sits surrounded by water on an island on the west side of Montreal, Quebec, which isn't too far from LaSalle. Um, so this is the inside of LaSalle Distillery now. Okay? Um, but that LaSalle plant, when it shut down, there was still a lot of barrels that were being stored there. And they took that, and they blended it, and the very last product that came from LaSalle became the new XR the Crown Royal XR, and it was in a blue box. And that's what we're going to be trying today. Ha <laughs> ha! It came very special release, so it's very special packaging. Um, beautiful. This is a, un I mean, this is, this is nice. This is nice. You can use these forever, right? I saw people make COVID masks out of these. This this has got a different feel altogether. It is serious. Uh, so anyhow, we're going to pull this out. 
Ta -da! Now I'm going to show you the picture that I took. Uh, this is the one that I was teasing you with today. Just, I, just turned out really good, I think. <laughs> so uh, we'll be putting this up uh, later on after, uh, after the verb cast is over, but I just wanted you to see it because I'm really proud of that one. Um, yes, it was cold. Yes, I bundled up. I was wearing uh, my coveralls and everything to go out and take that picture. It was cold. So this XR, it came to the shelves in 2012. Did I have that right? Yes, 2012. Uh, it was a limited release. It sold for about $125 a bottle. And the last of these have finally gone off the shelves. Can you still get it? You, you spend some money? Yeah, you can still get it. Um, this one was $125. The last time I checked, it had gone up to about $350. Give it a little more time. I think last year is when it finally went off the shelf for good. And then it was replaced by the XR 18 year, which I have tried. I've tried this too. This, is, this bottle I have opened. I've opened it when I got it. Uh, but I've never tried it on a burb cast. So we're going to do that now. <clears throat> That's really on there. <laughs> All right. Oh man, spilled it. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, because this is an XR, and because there's no more of this available, I mean, literally, there's you, this. You're not going to find this stuff unless you want to spend big bucks for somebody who owns it in their private collection. Um, you might find it on a shelf in California somewhere where they're charging outrageous secondary prices. It's available if you want to spend big money. I got this one when it was $125, and I'm very, very glad I did. But this is going to be different because I'm not going to add water to it. I'm not going to add ice to it. I'm not even going to pour another one. This is it out of this bottle because once this bottle's gone, that's it. All right. Here we go. I didn't write down any tasting notes for this. I love going back and looking at the history of these distilleries. You know, the, the fact that the LaSalle distillery was purchased in Kentucky during Prohibition. That, that distillery had probably closed down. It wasn't selling its stuff. When LaSalle dismantled it, took it to Canada, rebuilt it, put it back together, they were selling, <laughs> they were selling their wares in the U.S. during Prohibition as medicinal. You'd think that the, the distillery that was in Kentucky could have done that, right? There were 12, maybe 10, no, 10 permits for medicinal whiskey during Prohibition. Only six of them were used. Just makes you sad. And Old Forester is one of those. It was one of those, uh, and they were there. They were in business then, and they're still in business now. I like that. <laughs> this is, you know, we we dealt with some weak nose uh, last Thursday when we did the IW Harper. This does not have weak nose. I'm getting cloves. Cinnamon is shouting at me. Vanilla. I mean, this has got bourbon notes. Um, Crown Royal is rye. It's a it's it's predominantly a rye whiskey. All Crown Royal is rye. Um, and it's locally sourced rye, by the way. In a lot of cases, but this one has got a lot of really beautiful bourbon notes to it. There is some very slight greenness to it, um, like twigs. Uh, I'm not going to go so far as to say grass, but and you got to look for it. You got to get past the bourbon notes to find it. There's some apple on the nose, some anise or anise, um, which 
you might know is kind of like a licorice type of uh, scent. All right, let's go. This is deep, this is rich, it's complex, and it's only 80 proof. 80 proof. Crown Royal, I think all of it's 80 proof. I don't think there's one that isn't. Okay, this one's 90. The Noble Collection's 90. At least that one is. Um, this Crown Rye... That one's 90. Okay, it's making me a liar. <laughs> this one's 80. Uh, the peach. The peach is only 70. The black is 90. All right, so it kind of runs the gamut a little bit. It made me a liar. Um, but this is 80 proof. I better check that. <laughs> no, this made me a liar. 80. And it's hard to believe that I'm getting this much flavor and this much richness and this much character out of an 80 proof whiskey. But this is, there's a reason why this has been acclaimed. And um, you're not going to find a better crown product. I mean, I've had the 18 year. It was good, but it had a lot more spice to it, had a lot more of a bite to it. This one is just smooth. It's like a gentle kiss with a little bit of tongue. The winter wheat is 90. Good to know. I mean, we can go through the gamut here. Not, not that it's important, but... Um, now, this hand-selected barrel, which is the only one that I found any reviewer say they like better than this. And I haven't opened this. This is the only one I have, and I don't know if I'll ever find it again. This one is 103 proof. Um, the reserve is 80 proof. The salted caramel, 70 proof. The mesquite, 80 proof. Now, Crown Royal, I mean, this this is, a, in a lot of cases, somebody's first whiskey that they ever drink. This was, once I decided I was going to get back into whiskey, Crown Royal was my first ever whiskey back into the fold. My first bourbon back into the fold was the 80 proof Jim Beam. And that that one, it, I, it had been several years since I went from this to the Jim Beam. I went on a cruise in 2011 and ordered Crown almost exclusively when I was on the cruise. Until somebody told me that I should try Jameson. Canadian whiskey, Irish whiskey. Exact same proof, 80 proof. And I found that I liked the Crown better. Now I'd have to do another taste test to see what I think. If I like Crown Royal, the regular bottle, which, by the way, this is empty. I, I couldn't, I think I finished my other one. <laughs> I just left the box down here. Um, I thought I had it, but I must have finished it in, in a haze. <laughs> um, I would like to do a taste test again one of these days to see if I like Crown better than Jameson. Uh, at the time, I liked Crown better, but that's because that's what I was used to, and I wasn't used to the flavors of Irish whiskey. Um, nowadays, I mean, this would win the taste test against regular Crown and, and regular Jameson, hands down. Um, so this this is a lot of people's first whiskey. This is a, this is a lot of people's uh, one that they, that, that they get started with, and it was for me. Uh, this is still a lot of people's favorite whiskey. This is a lot of people's go-to. Uh, the Crown, Crown and Coke. I mean, that's a, that's a, if you don't go to a bar and see Crown Royal, then that bar doesn't care about you at all. 
<laughs> they don't care about customers because that's a big one. As much as many people drink Jack and Coke, Crown and Coke is just as big. Only it's going to have more of a rye profile, and it won't have gone through that uh, that uh, Lincoln County process with all the charcoal. And it's just sad that once this bottle is gone, it's gone. I've got some other ones like that in my collection. Somebody asked me a while back, which one of the bourbons in my collection is the most prized? Which is the one that uh, will probably outlast the rest of them? This one right here. There's other ones, like for instance, you know, the honey and the maple. Curious about the proof on these now that we've talked about it a little bit. 70 proof, 80 proof, 70, 80. Um, these are discontinued, retired. They're never coming back. So if I were to name the three prize bottles in my collection, these would be them. Um, because you can't get them anymore. But of the, th of the three, um, this one, the Crown Royal XR, from uh, the 2012 LaSalle release. Um, this is the one that I prize the most. It's fantastic. Um, I, I was blown away. Crown is good. It's not amazing. They're all blended whiskeys. This is heads and tails above any other Crown product and, and many of the bourbons I've tried. Um, this is just one of the best of the best and uh, it deserves it deserves this beautiful presentation that it gets. Um, it's just a gorgeous color. It's clear as can be, and it's just an amazing, amazing pour. And again, if there was one that I prized, if there's one that um, that's going to outlive everything else in the collection, it's going to be this one. If I'm on my deathbed and everything else, I've got cirrhosis of the liver and everything else is emptied and I'm in an alcoholic haze, this is the one, as they're unplugging me, that I want to be drinking. I know, that got really morose. I didn't mean for it to get like that. It got really dark. Um, there's just a few things I want before I die. This is going to be one of the last things. That. So, it's just that good. And it's that rare. And uh, if you can get your hands on a bottle, fantastic. Um... But that's, that's what I wanted to do. Happy International Whiskey Day. I hope you try something that isn't a bourbon or even an American whiskey. You know, step outside, try something different. Uh, if you haven't gotten any Crown Royal, maybe you can find one that you haven't tried and you'd like to get into that. Or you want to go back to St. Patrick's Day and do an Irish whiskey. Or by golly, try some scotch. There was a gentleman I was talking to the other day who says, I really don't like scotch. I don't like that peatiness. I said, well, hmm, hmm, have I got a scotch for you? And I walked him over to the Balvenies. Balvenies. Um, they have the the Caribbean rum cask that they have, and then they had got the double wood. And neither one of them are particularly peaty. They're very tasty. Um, and if you want to start getting into scotch, uh, and you want a scotch that isn't you know smoky and peaty, then uh, the Balvenies has got uh, a couple of really good ones. They're they're not the cheapest things in the world. They come in a really nice tube. Um, but they are going to be a great international scotch. So you got a couple or about an hour here before uh, the store closes. If you want to enjoy International Whiskey Day, uh, grab a scotch, grab an Irish whiskey, grab a Crown Royal, um, maybe a Suntory, which is a Japanese whiskey, or um, something like that. I mean, I think there's some other stuff out there, too. There's, there's some that are more and more starting to uh, get out there. There was another one I heard of the other day, another classification of world whiskey, and I don't remember what it was now. Um, but there's other stuff out there. So enjoy the day, and uh, we will see you on Thursday. I know what I'm going to do on Thursday now. got to be nice with that. This is one that I picked up a while ago, and I still haven't opened it, and I've been asked a few times. Michael's talking to me. <laughs> Legavulin. A liquid campfire. Got a bottle of yellow spot from my uncle. Looking forward to trying that. Yeah, the green spot was fantastic. Um, the yellow spot is just, it's its the same product that's just a little different. Um, but the, the green spot, 
Green Spot for an Irish whiskey was delicious. It had a lot of flavor, a lot of uh, complexity. It was one of the few that actually seemed complex to me. Um, it, it was really tasty, so I hope you enjoy that yellow spot. Um, the bourbon that we're going to do on Thursday, uh, let me check real quick, make sure there aren't any holidays between now and next Thursday. Uh, the calendar. Uh, let's see. No. So, as, as a matter of fact, there isn't one on Thursday either, but April 1st opens Alcohol Awareness Month. So I think next Thursday we're going to be aware of alcohol. I don't think that's the way they mean it. <laughs> that's the way I mean it. We are going to get this one open. This is the Redemption Rum Cask Finish. This is a limited edition release. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to find it now. It's been on the shelves just a couple of weeks, and it went really fast. Um, I do like Redemption Rye. And this one is their rum cask release. It's 94 proof. And this is the one that we... It's a limited release. So I actually bought two of these because I wanted one that I could taste and then one that I could hold off and share with others later on. Um, I've heard nothing but good about this release. If you can find the rum cask release, get it. There's a lot of different Redemption products, um, but this one is unique and rare, and I look forward to trying this on Thursday uh, while we still are in March and before things get silly on April 1st. So uh, make sure that I'm not missing anything. I am not. I will let you go. I know the Oscars are tonight. Some of you may care about that. I'm going to drink. <laughs> and I'm going to be uploading old Burbcast to YouTube tonight. So uh, that's, that's my focus for the evening. If you want to watch the Oscars and enjoy that, be my guest. I, I think not for myself. So I don't like any of those award shows anymore. I don't watch the Grammys. I don't watch, I don't watch any of it. I don't watch the Emmys. I don't watch any of it. I should. I'm in that industry. When I'm on stage, I'll care about it. How's that? <laughs> All right, guys. You take care. We will see you on Thursday with this Redemption uh, Rum Cask Finish. I hope you can find some, but if not, get something and drink along with me. And we will see you on Thursday.